you say something? Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure how to turn it up on my end. That's fine. I, I, I turned turn it up on my end. It's fine. Okay, right on. <clears throat> yeah, how are you doing? I'm pretty well, thank you. How about you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, so... Well, uh, okay, I'm, so since we mentioned uh, about the uh, normative theory, right, you, you mentioned that you don't really have a particular normative theory, which is fine. Um, so what I was thinking about is if you're going to, um, like you mentioned that your normative views are close to uh, TD. Um, the way I understand TD is that if there is a rights violation, um, then there is some amount of uh, negative deontic points that are being assigned to that particular action and um, in the absence of any uh, factors that out that outscale it like for instance utility or uh, suffering um, if those considerations are absent uh, then the action would just be impermissible um, by virtue of it having uh, a negative um, quantity associated with it, if that's uh, like if that's if that's something you can you know get like it's like I assign so it's like if I kill someone I assign like minus hundred deontic points to it, and if by killing that person um, I'm generating like some x maybe like infinite amounts of well-being or I'm preventing infinite amount of uh, suffering or something like that then that is crossing that threshold but is basically out filling that negative hundred uh, point, deontic points and that's how I view justify justification in this case um, so in the case of like uh, maybe shooting an odd order predator uh, the way I see it is that I assign a negative value to it um, because I don't think it would be immoral on my view even if there wasn't a utility case to be made. So um, are you with me until, uh, until this? Sorry, what was that question? You cut out a little bit. Yeah, so I, I was just asking you if you you're following until... Yeah, I believe so. It seems to make sense to me. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much why I don't assign like I don't think um, it would be a rights violation to shoot a predator because I, I like in the utility calculus uh, it's not amounting to a negative value pro tanto uh, which is being like if you're if you're calling it like a justified rights violation uh, I just take that to mean in the normative sense I just take that to mean that there is some negative value. But on the net, there is more uh, the utility generated is uh, outscaling that negative value, or the suffering prevented is outscaling that negative value. Right. But, uh, I don't think I would take the view that it wouldn't be justified if the suffering component wasn't. Like, I I don't think you would say that it wouldn't be a justified rights violation um, if there was uh, like even if there was no utility change, right? Um, well, what? yeah. So that's just how I see justification in that case. Hmm. Well, let me think about that. Cause, hmm. All right, give me one second. <laughs> sure. Would you consider it a rights violation to kill someone in self-defense? Like, let's say, like, you were attacked with lethal force and you use lethal force to protect yourself. Would you consider that a rights violation? No, I wouldn't. Yeah, see, that's, that's why I think our views are different. I think what you're calling a non-rights violation is what I would call a justified rights violation. Because, like, for example, like, I understand the right to life to be the negative deontological value of saying like it's it's not good to murder sentient beings right or to kill sentient beings and 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 so 
if 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 the the if the right to life means that it's not okay to kill sentient beings or that there's a negative deontological value assigned to it which would be the case in threshold deontology then that would make it so that um it like i don't see how it would no longer be a rights violation when that that threshold gets met and and the the countervailing or the not countervailing but the the counterweight of the suffering and the utility that uh, either gets um, suffering that gets prevented or utility that gets generated is uh, is uh, let's see lost my train of thought there for a second <laughs> have to excuse me it is the morning oh, that's fine. I have a <laughs> yeah I do, it's morning and I haven't quite had my caffeine yet so I'm a little bit like woozy yeah. <laughs> that's fine but uh let's see what was i saying mm. i guess where i was going with that was that i like to me is like that's what i understand a right to be is when you ex when you have mm -hmm. that negative deontological 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 value against this yeah. certain action and then it, even if you wind up in situations where it is justified like it would I don't see how it still wouldn't be violating that rule it's just in a situ like it, it just becomes justified because of the normative theory right <laughs> okay yeah so what I was getting at so um, so when you say it's a justified rights violation what is it that is doing like what is doing the work with regards to justifying it like what's doing the justification I've been trying to think about that for a long time and I haven't come to a really solid answer which is I think largely why I don't have a specific normative theory that I subscribe to but I've been trying to think mm -hmm. about like what it is that that like causes that justification and it seems to be at least uh, from what I can tell is that there's certain weights that I give to different uh, rights violations and in in those situations depending on the weights that are given like for example I would I would assign like a heavy weight to murdering a sentient being but I would assign a a less heavier weight to like preventing someone from voting for example and so depending on the weight of the um, of the action in question I think that there are often situations where we can justify protecting a right and um, by violating rights, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah. So, but the, but the thing is that um, even if even if there are different weights, right? So let's say um, maybe like uh, slap someone is like minus ten points, and uh, chopping someone's hand is like minus hundred points or something. Even though the diff there is a difference in weight. Uh, the net would still be of 10 even if it's just like slapping someone um, but le but let me put it in the in the context of like some defense right so um, in in the calculus when we put a rights I mean I, I shouldn't call it a rights violation because I don't agree you but um, let's say you shot someone in self-defense and they uh, were like going to kill you, um, them in self-defense, um, and you. If you consider that a rights violation, that would just add to the utility uh, calculus in a, as a negative value. And if you don't have a reason to uh, like, if you don't know what is um, causing the justification, then I don't see a reason how that negative. Uh, 100 points or whatever arbitrary value uh, weightage that has been assigned I am not seeing how it is being um, outscaled because that's what TD entails like if there is an outscaling maybe in terms of utility or suffering prevention um, only then it would be a justified rights violation yeah I guess but then I'm not seeing what's doing the yeah I guess that's why I don't completely you know uh, subscribe to threshold deontology 
And, you know, I'm not sure if I can give you a good answer to this because I, I've been trying to figure this out for quite some time and I haven't really come to anything that is satisfying to me, um, which is why my normative theory is still kind of up in the air. Um, but, yeah, like, th that's that's the nearest I've been able to figure out, though, is that, like, for example, like, if there is a weighty rights violation, that uh, perhaps it would be the case that um, using this, like, the same scale of, like, how weighty it is, depending on, like, how weighty the rights violation you're using to protect that right is, like, as long as it's not more weighty, so, like, for example, like, you're, you're committing rights violations that are uh, more serious, like, for example, murdering someone as opposed to slapping someone, uh, you know, as you were giving examples of. Um, so, if, you know, murdering someone could, like, since it's not more weighty than uh, murdering someone, you know, si simpliciter, like, if we're just looking at... So, so for example, like, if I c kill somebody in self-defense... Uh, and, th and that's killing them, mm. right? And so that would be mm. a negative value. But since it's not higher than the value of me being killed, I think it would be justified. And so I think that would be... But, for example, like, if somebody... If I were to kill somebody um, in order to prevent, like, somebody's uh, voting rights being violated, you know, I might not consider that to be a justified rights violation because the weight of voting is a lot less than or of, of not being able to vote or getting your your right to vote violated is much less serious than uh, getting your right to to live um, violated oh wait so wait, wait, wait one sec so like if there was someone who to kill you or maybe kill someone else and um, the only way to do it was to like take away their voting rights hypothetically um, you wouldn't consider that as a rights violation wait sorry how is this situation set up yeah yeah so the setup is um, there is someone right person a and there is a killer the killer is going to kill person a um, and the only way you have, you can save person a is by taking away the voting rights of a uh, killer, right? So sure. if you just um, legally take away the rights of this killer, the killer won't kill person A. Um, well, would you consider that as a rights violation? Well, yeah, sure, but I would consider it like even more justified than defending them with lethal force because uh, it would be less weighty of a rights violation than, no, fine. than the murder. <laughs> Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah, yeah I get it. Um, yeah, so because if if you would say no to that, I would just ask you to name the trade. Uh, but since uh, you said yes, right? Uh, but yeah, like again. So the thing is, I don't know what's like what's doing the justification here uh, because it's like even like even if I give you a situation where there is no utility change. Um, and all you're doing is just taking away someone's rights and it's not impacting uh, any utility. It's not generating utility, it's not preventing suffering, uh, none of that. Um, I, I, like, it, I, I'm not, I don't think he would say that it's, uh, it, it's still like, I don't think you would say it wouldn't be justified. Like for instance, if there was someone in a coma, right, and uh, there is this person who killed this person, and uh, who who is going to kill the person? And you shoot this person, um, and basically you aren't like you aren't generating any uh, utility, or you aren't uh, preventing any suffering because this person in the coma is uh, stipulated to not suffer. Uh, all you're doing is that you're committing an action which is uh, which is assigned a negative value on your because you consider it a rights violation, right? So it would be assigned a negative value, but um, like, but then you call it a justified rights violation. So what is it that is justified? What is it that is doing the justification in that case? Because you wouldn't say that it like it is a rights violation. Um, well, let me uh, let me backtrack a little bit. Like in in that situation, if you say 
um, it's it, it 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 is still a rights violation, but not a justified rights violation. Um, that would be like a reductio on your way. Uh, wait, is the person in the coma sentient? Uh, yeah, they are sentient, but they won't be able to uh, experience any suffering or whatever. Oh, okay. And you're saying that calling that a justified rights violation is the reductio? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, let me, let me just, uh, you know, reframe all of that. So, there is a person... And that person is in uh, like some some medical condition where they can't experience the suffering that is entailed by someone killing them, uh, but they are sentient. And there is this killer who is going to kill this person, right? And um, the the point is, if you are going to um, like if you if you shoot this person, uh, let let me just ask you: Would you consider that as a rights violation? Well, yeah, I consider killing sentient beings to be a rights violation, because the cause the right in this case would be the okay. the deontological value of of saying that it's yeah. it's a negative value to kill sentient beings. Yeah, uh, but then there is no utility change that is happening. So as far as like at least under TD, the uh, the net value is still going to be a negative because you committed a rights violation. And it's not the case that there is going to be some utility change. So would you deem this action as an immoral action? Wait, so is the person in the coma incapable of experiencing pleasure as well? Yeah, there is There is no utility change. The utility change is just zero. So there is neither an, a generation of well-being nor a generation of suffering. Oh, oh. It's not a prevention. So, so the person is sentient, but they're not capable of experiencing well-being at all. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't call that justified then, because. Or, 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 or you could say, or you could say that uh, they are capable of uh, experiencing pleasure, but saving them is not going to generate pleasure. Like, it, it doesn't matter how it is put. The the, the overall. Point is just that there is no utility change. So they can experience pleasure, but they will not experience any pleasure during the life that they would have had after they got killed. They're like assuming that they never got killed. Uh, yeah, you could say that. Okay, I mean, hmm, that's a weird one. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, the, the point is just that there is no utility change uh, by preventing that um, by preventing that particular death, uh, murder. Uh, I could say. Hmm. Because if you say that it is a justified rights violation, even in that case, it would be a contradiction under TD. Uh, could you explain that contradiction? Although I don't think I would take that position because if someone is unable to or is able to experience well-being but they're not going to experience any well-being, then like I would just consider that maybe. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's the, the contradiction there would just be that under under TD, it is and it is not justified because um, like analytically that which is justified under TD is. Uh, a rights violation which is outscaled by utility generated or suffering prevented um, and but yeah but you're also affirming that it, it is not a uh, justified uh, sorry it is a justified rights violation so like it is and it is not the case that it is a justified rights violation that's where I was going with it oh okay but I don't think I would call it a justified rights violation it sounds like you're describing to me like what the nutrivore would call like a trivial form of sentience right which is like sentience that like doesn't actually have the capacity for like preferences and well-being and things like that and so i i don't think i would actually assign a value to like that form of sentience specifically oh no no no. well, well uh i don't necessarily need to do that all i could say that is um 
Like, yeah, they, they have as much sentience as uh, the average person does. Uh, with the exception, like, I'm just building into the hypothetical that they are, like, there is no utility change that is going to happen as a result of uh, saving this person. Right, but like the only way I understand that to be the case is that the, their sentience is is not the same as the average person by virtue of the fact that they are unable to experience, or not unable, but are not going to experience any well-being or suffering as a result of being alive. Uh, uh, I am not sure if that's the only way, like maybe some other way, like uh, yeah, they are able uh, to experience well-being, uh, but the equivalent amount of uh, suffering that is generated by their existence and the well-being and the suffering just cancel out. So the net new the net change in utility is just seen. Okay, let me think about that. So, like, for this example, we don't have to use someone in a coma. We can just use your, a regular person, Yeah, right? we don't... Yeah, yeah, we could just do... Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, still thinking about it. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I see how that would be a contradiction on threshold deontology, but I guess that would be part of why I don't accept threshold deontology, because it, it doesn't seem to capture my views accurately. It just seems to be the one that does most most closely, like, compared to the yeah. other ones, if that makes sense. <clears throat> yeah. And so I guess this just brings us back again to, like, the... The... <clears throat> well, cause, like what's doing the justification exactly yeah that's what it brings us back to yeah right right which <clears throat> as far as i can tell it seems to be like what causes the justification is that like for example like if someone is going like uh is going to experience the same amount of well-being and suffering and it won't change at all uh, if they were killed yeah then mm. I, I would I would still consider it, um, it, it I would still consider it wrong to kill them and it would be morally justified to protect them with lethal force if it came down to that but yeah the, the reason for that seems to be centered around like I said before like the weight of the rights violation that's occurring and how it compares to the rights mm. violation that has to occur in order to prevent that rights violation. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it does. Um, but like again, I, I'm uh, I'm having the same trouble, right? So, if if you're calling that a rights violation to shoot like a killer uh, to protect someone from being killed, right? Right. Uh, and like, and like, an analytically rights violation just means that there is like, um, pro tanto, there is some negative value associated. With it. So in the calculus, there'll be some negative value happening. So what is like? So in order for it to be justified, there has to be some positive value, which is like canceling out the negative, and is like overall on the net there is more positive. So since it's not utility, because we have already stipulated it that there is no utility change, there is something that is doing the like, something that is doing the justification. Some some positive value, something that is to that equation, which is like 
uh, which is right now to, to it's net negative but to to, to there is like um, some positive value so i'm i'm just like curious about what type of value is oh, I see. because uh, so once yeah yeah like i can exp- like i can just rephrase the entire thing the way i understand it and maybe that makes sense to you but i'll get to that like once 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 uh, like we have explored your view about um what's doing that justification Sure. Well, I mean, I think the positive value is the prevention of the rights violation itself. I think that preventing rights violations is a good thing or is something that, like, is uh, morally justified. Yeah, as long like as, a chaotic good thing, right? Yeah, as long as, like, the, the rights violations that have to occur in order to prevent those rights violations aren't even worse than the rights violation that would have been prevented. Huh. Uh, That's what I've been trying to explain. I don't know if I was just not clear earlier. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like it's it's kind of weird to me, uh, but I, I I get it. Uh, so, okay, let let me just do this. I'll just reframe the entire thing the way I understand it, and you let me know if that makes sense to you. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So, okay. So there has to be like some semantic clarification, right? So when we talk about rights violations, all I'm referring to is actions which we ought not perform in a vacuum. And by vacuum, all I mean is that there is no utility change. So uh, the way I think about this situation is, um, okay, uh, just going into a bit of meta ethics. All I mean by ought is that which comports with my preferences. Uh, right. But or not, I just mean uh, something that doesn't comport with my preferences. Right. I'm, uh, I'm also an individual yeah. subjectivist. Yeah. So that's that's all I mean when I say art. So basically the translation would just be um, a rice violation is that action towards which have a negative attitude or a desire against when it is performed in a vacuum where and vacuum just means there is no utility change um so look at it when i look at like a self defense or shooting someone as a, who is killing another person even if there is no utility change i uh, don't have a negative attitude towards that action the action of shooting someone to pro- protect someone else i don't have uh, a negative attitude towards that which is why in my calculus uh, these actions are just a um, net zero so uh, it, it would be a protanto zero and um, you could add other things uh, to the calculus and maybe a coin like for instance uh, you shoot this person but it generates like infinite uh, suffering for the person who uh, for for the killer right to shoot the killer and it, the killer would just infinitely suffer um at that point it would be like a net negative because there is also that suffering uh, aspect is coming to it uh and like at some threshold i wouldn't shoot the killer by virtue of there being like a negative uh, a net negative value in the calculus um but in like relatively in the predator prey case uh, or any other like killer uh victim case uh, I just assign a net zero value to rights violations. Wait, not rights violations. Yeah, I just assign a negative as a net zero value to these actions, and that's why I don't consider them a rights violation because I don't have a negative attitude towards uh, shooting someone to protect someone else. Um, so yeah, so that's that's how I think it's not a rights violation and. Um, it gets around this issue like it gets around the issue that maybe yours you're facing when it comes to like this um like what is doing the justification so the way i just see it is that um firstly the action itself is a net zero and there is also some utility generated by preventing this rights violation and also some suffering prevented by uh shooting this person um which makes it 
like it it makes it a good action uh on the net and there would be some threshold of maybe utility generated or suffering um prevented at which point it would be an obligation on my to shoot the person so that's just how i see it and that's why i don't consider it a rights violation yeah that makes a lot of sense to me and you said something earlier that that kind of uh stuck out to me is uh, like like what exactly do you mm-hmm. consider a right to be yeah, I just t- like actions which, um, like, well, yeah, actions which uh, I prefer are not done uh, to people, like be- beings which I consider valuable. That is what I would regard a negative right, and a positive right would just be actions which I would have a positive attitude towards uh, being done to someone that I'm, or whatever. Right. So, like, I think you just have a different understanding of rights than I do, at least as far as I can yeah. tell. Like, because what I understand a right to be is a deontological value, uh, like, regarding the treatment of another person. Um, <clears throat> and in the case of negative rights violations, that would be um, examples of, like, not... Um, interfering with things like their autonomy or um, maybe their uh, pursuit of happiness perhaps right depending on the the, yeah. um, the degree I guess that, that is occurring but yeah so yeah. so like it seems like we just have totally so I, I would have a negative towards uh, those actions like preventing uh, someone from uh, pursuing well-being or like uh, body autonomy all these things i would i would have a negative attitude towards like in a vacuum so that's why i would consider those rights violations uh but i wouldn't consider like shooting a predator or shooting like a serial killer or rights violation. so is it, yeah i uh, yeah uh, you're right there, there's probably just a difference in the concept that we both have but like i want to ask you like do you think uh the the way i laid it out do you think that comes captures your view or do you think there is some aspect which isn't captured by uh, saying that rights are uh, you know actions towards which we have uh, positive yeah. attitude towards or negative attitude towards depending on the type of right hmm. Yeah. hmm um it might capture my view. I'm trying to think if there's something that like it's it's missing. Yeah, sure. You can you can do that. Yeah. Because that just that just makes a lot of sense to me. Because um, yeah, it just it just completely circumvents the problem of um, like you know in the utility case where. Um, like if the utility was equalized there was no utility change and there was still a rights violation which was in, uh, like impending and you prevented it there would be uh, still a net negative on your uh, on your plate right so yeah, well, just complete but that's only true of threshold deontology right like what about what i described to you earlier where i'm comparing the weights of the rights that are being prevented against the weights of the rights that you have to violate in order to prevent those rights being violated it, it, sorry i know that <laughs> i use the term in a lot in that sentence i hope it didn't get confusing uh can you just uh, repeat it for the sake of like yeah so basically what do you think about what i was saying earlier when I was saying that like what makes the difference for me in a vacuum is the weight of the rights violations that are that are being prevented weight compared against the weight of the rights violations that would have to occur in order to prevent those so for example like if I had to like holocaust an entire like yeah so like if I had to holocaust an entire continent in order to save one person then that would be like an example of like way worse rights violations or or weightier more serious violations than the vi- than the right that was being protected and so i would not consider that a justified rights violation yeah. but 
if if they were equal, like for example, like if someone punched me in the face and then they were continuing to punch me, right? Mm. And so I decided to like use force against them back and start hitting them as well. Like even though I'm violating their right to not mm. be hit, I think that it's justified because the weight of of the right that's being violated is equal or less than that. I mean, not less because I'm hitting them, and so I consider that to be the same. Um, is yeah. equal to the right that's being violated, and so I think if it's equal to or less serious than the right that's being violated, then I think it would be justified. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think there is probably like a problem with that. Uh, like, unless I'm misunderstanding it. So I think. Uh, so let's let's take this. Uh, let's take a situation where there is a murder that is going to happen and there is a murder that you have to commit to prevent that action and if murders just have equal weighting like if you think like I, because you're putting it in terms of like deontic rule right and they're just going to have the same value so if you say murdering someone is like minus 100 points and you're preventing uh, uh, someone's murder by minus hundred points by like shooting that person. So it's it's like so it like it would cancel out and the net would be a zero. But yeah, so if let's say uh, you shot this person. Here one second. So let's say you shot this killer and it generated like one suffering point. So net you have is zero for the rights violation because they both cancelled out. And then you have a minus one, so on the net it wouldn't be justified under TD at least. Yeah, and and again, I think that's probably why I don't accept TD. Like, I don't think it fully captures my views. I think that like what I described captures my views a lot better. But I don't understand that to be a normative theory that I've come across or anything. Um, but yeah, I, like all I'm saying is that TD can capture your view if like. Uh, like given that uh, he, you just like um, you know like if your concept of rights like goes an alteration if my concept of rights so if you just take some, yeah like if you just take the uh, if you take a view like mine uh, with, uh, with respect to rights um, if, if TD would perfectly capture that situation Right, but I don't think it does because, like, for example, like you were saying, oh, well, if there's any suffering that's generated by preventing a rights violation with the same level of rights violation that was going to be prevented, then on TD that would be an action that would be impermissible. But on my, on my, on my position, it would not be. You know, for example, like, if I kill somebody, like, that's going to kill somebody else, like, presumably their family is going to suffer, and, you know, there's going to be a certain amount of uh, negative utility that comes as a result of that, but I still wouldn't, that, that utility wouldn't, unless it was, like, like, more high than is, like, how do I put this, unless, unless the suffering was more, um, intense than, like, what we would expect, you know, like, from a mourning situation, mm -hmm. Like, for example, like, they were just going to be absolutely tortured for the rest of their lives, you know? Then I, I don't see, like, I wouldn't see that as necessarily a... I wouldn't see that as an unjustified rights violation. Wait, I'm not... Oh, wait, I lost my track. Yeah. Uh, can you just, like, what's the situation again? Sure. So, I'm saying that, like, <clears throat> let's, if I kill somebody and it prevents uh -huh. the murder of somebody else even uh -huh. if there's like extra suffering that comes from that like for example like um for example the family that would have to mourn i wouldn't consider that an unjustified rights uh -huh. violation unless the utility was just so great that i that i couldn't i couldn't even um i couldn't even like um, unless the utility drain was so great that it would just like essentially like sway my view and so like in that way i feel like my view is similar to threshold the ontology but it's different at the same time because like uh -huh. i'm because i'm considering the no, i think that can also be captured so like i like uh, in my calculus there is also a waiting for like deontic good then there is obviously a waiting for 
uh, utility generated and there is uh, a waiting for um, for suffering prevented so suffering prevention would be a good thing on my view so that would have positive points. utility generation would be a good thing so that would have positive points and deontic good like preventing a rights violation or uh, something like that would also be uh, good on my view so that would also have positive points um, and yeah so there would be some threat you know, like a combination of all of these and there would be some threshold of suffering uh, experienced by like the family of the killer or something like that um, yeah if that is crossed if that, if that isn't crossed it would be justified in my view anyway so I, I don't see how TD wouldn't capture that hmm but on TD, would you have to say that it's a it's no longer a rights violation, or would I still have would I still be able to retain my view that it is a rights violation, but it's justified? <laughs> on TD, well, if you're going if you're going to the con if you're going to adopt a concept like mine of rights, uh, you would have to abandon the view that it is a rights violation. I'm just not sure if I'm I'm convinced of that though. Like it seems to me like it is a rights violation. Yeah, I, I understand. <sighs> yeah, I mean it's it's kind of like the, when I was grappling with it. That's pretty much my feeling too. So, but like when I talked to like one of my friends, uh, and we came or came down to this concept of rights, just boiling down to whether we have positive attitude towards them or not in a vacuum. That just cleared my confusion, and since then I take the view that uh, negative rights are just actions that ought not be done uh, to someone in a vacuum, and uh, that that just clears it out. So if like if the situation in a vacuum is there is going to be a person going to kill another person, I wouldn't have a negative attitude towards shooting this person. So that wouldn't be a rights violation in my view, just analytically. But I don't see why that couldn't be compatible with my position, where like I could just say that it was a justified rights violation instead of a rights violation, instead of a non-rights violation. Uh, well, there would be like if there are like if there, it would entail a contradiction that rights violations are. Um, attitude, like actions towards which we have uh, negative attitude to, uh, towards in a vacuum, and it's some something else. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not following. It's it's what what what's the something else? Yeah, yeah. yeah like oh wait, let me let me just recapitulate one second. So, um, wait, 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 where was I? Yeah, if you just take rights to mean uh, that towards which we have negative attitude towards in a vacuum, um, on my view it would be like a net zero on the utility calculus when it is performed, but on your view it would be a net, uh, so not a net negative, or like a proton to negative in the calculus because you are referring to it as a rights violation. Uh, so in the calculus it would have a negative value and in my own it would be like a net zero I shouldn't say it's net zero it's a proton to zero value. Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm I've heard these words before but I'm not like could you explain to me like what the difference between oh, yeah, yeah. proton yeah, just, and prototo is yeah pro proton to is to yeah just just to like just to that extent like looking at that thing in isolation it would be zero but pro toto is when you look at the entire the entire picture, the whole picture. Like if I just see someone stabbing someone else, um, pro tanto that would be bad. But if I get the bigger picture that the person stabbing the other person uh, is actually like uh, the the person stabbed is a serial killer who, who is going to like holocaust millions of people, then I wouldn't 
uh, have a negative attitude towards that. So pro Tanto, I would have a negative attitude towards it, but when I get the full picture pro Toto, I wouldn't have a negative attitude towards it. Okay, I mean that that seems compatible with my position though, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if if we are saying that it is a rights violation, um, the action itself carries uh, a net zero value. Ah, why am I saying that again? The action itself, by itself, has a zero value on my concept of rights. But if we take like your concept, it would be zero in virtue of something else cancelling out. Uh, so it would be like a net zero, rather than the action itself having zero. So because you consider it a rights violation, and there is going to be a negative value associated with that in the calculus, whereas mine does not have a negative value value associated. It's a zero, so that would it wouldn't be compatible for it to have a negative value and not to have a negative value. Wait, why would it not have a negative value? Because the negative value is being assigned based on like whether I have a negative attitude towards it or not, in a vacuum. Right. So, like, if you have a negative attitude towards killing a sentient being in a vacuum, then I don't see how that would would be an example of that. Yeah, but that, that's not what I'm going by, right? So, all I'm going by is when I'm shooting this person. To save another person, is that something I uh, have a negative attitude towards? Right. So, but that just doesn't seem to capture my understanding of what a right is, and maybe maybe my understanding of what a right is is skewed. I've been trying to kind of suss this out, and I've gotten like all sorts of like mixed kind of answers that I've been able to find, like. Some people think that like rights are like these rules that we set, but then that like they're more complex than just simple rules. They have like exceptions written into them, you know, and so they're like they're potentially infinitely long with like however many exceptions could be like made for it. And so, and so it's like very detailed, very specific rules. Like I'm not really, I don't really subscribe to that idea, um, but like. <sighs> That's just how I understand a right to be is that like f is the the negative the negative deontological value in a vacuum right is 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 uh -huh. is what causes there to be a right um so like possessing a right like is seems So I could I mean I could just say that um yeah, they, like there could be like a different rule that we are operating off of. Like you are operating off of a rule that uh, it is wrong to kill sentient beings, uh, whereas I am going by different rule. Like maybe some rule like it's uh, it's only wrong to kill a sentient being if and only if some conditions, something like that. Right. So so you are subscribing to like that more complex definition of a right that has like. Like the the exceptions could, like, written into the rules. Could, maybe uh, mm -hmm. may, like I could just rephrase my view into a view like that, where uh, like yeah, I could I could just put my view of uh, rights in your terminology. Like I could say yeah, it is uh, a deontological rule violation. Uh, but it's just a different rule. It's not the rule that you are uh, going by. It's just something like, uh, yeah, it, it's it's a more qualified rule than just saying like it's categorically wrong to kill a subject. Right. So in that case, well, categorically wrong. I mean, I'm not saying that it's wrong in all situations. Yeah, 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 by category, like, uh, categorically wrong in absence of any utility uh, or any other side, like contextual. Oh, is that that's what that means then? Well, um, well, uh, when you say it's wrong to kill sentient beings, uh, that's the deontic rule, right? Yeah, that's what I would consider that, the right to life. 
yeah so i mean that that's kind of like confusing to me like um like i don't understand what a right to life is if it's not the the negative value of um of mer- taking away a life in a vacuum Mm. Well, or like, do you think it would be? Uh, do you think it's coherent to say something like, "Yeah, like a negative right is just an action that ought not be performed uh, to some subject"? Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's that's another view. In a vacuum. Right, right. In a vacuum, yeah, I should add it, yeah, in a vacuum. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so, like, I don't think on the meta-ethics, um, well, wait. Yeah, on meta-ethical level, there is no disagreement, but um, it's just, like, maybe, like, a conceptual thing, like, um, so uh, as I've said before, like all I mean when I say negative right is actions which I would have a negative attitude towards if uh, they are performed to some uh, subject, Pre- like presumably like a sentient being. Um, but if that's how you would define yeah, a rights I mean, violation, then that that seems more compatible with my position than the one you were describing earlier, where you were saying that uh, a rights a rights violation is a rights violation if and only if such and such why well because you're not inc- you're saying that a rights violation if if it, a rights violation is the the um the negative value that you associate in a vacuum yeah, so mm-hmm. then that doesn't that doesn't disappear like outside of the vacuum it's still there right it's just like there's there might be like counterweights or you know other other considerations that are going into the calculus for example utility and so yeah right so i don't see how that that seems to me to be more compatible with my position because that's what i'm saying basically is that like it's it's still a rights violation. It's just that there are other considerations which make it justified. And and, and on yeah, no, no, no. So that's that's not what I'm saying. So when I like an action which is like performed, like I'm not just looking at like just shooting someone in isolation. I'm also taking into consideration all the other relevant factoria fa- factors except the utility. So. When I say vacuum, all I mean is there is no utility concentration, but all the other things remain. Uh, other things like what? Everything except uh, utility. So you could have like the killer and the victim. If the utility didn't change, will I have a negative attitude towards shooting the killer? Is the question. And if the answer is. Uh, yes, I would have a negative attitude towards it, then it would be a rights violation if the answer is no, which is, uh, like, in my case, it is a no, uh, then it wouldn't be a rights violation on my view. So all I'm doing is just stripping out the utility. And suffering, of course. Well, yeah, that's part of utility. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Well, it seems like the the primary difference on our views, if if I'm understanding this correctly, is that you consider a rights violation mm-hmm. to be a rights violation, but not a rights violation in the case in which you find it you 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 like for example like the the other considerations cause you to consider it to be um, something that you don't consider a, a negative, right, or you don't assign a negative value to. But for me, I, d- I do assign a negative value to it, but like those other considerations, like li- like I said, I weigh them out by based on how serious they are. And so I think that that is like the primary difference, and I don't know if threshold deontology can can capture that for me. 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's just going to be like a conceptual thing, right? So, I mean, but I think, like, yeah, I, I, I think I am decently convinced that, um, like, if you grapple with this concept of riots, it might make sense to you eventually. I don't know. Uh, I'm just guessing. I mean, it, it's it does make sense to me, but like. I just am not convinced. But you have that, like, uh, yeah, you, you, like maybe it's just that, uh, yeah, you still want to call it a rights violation. Is that like something that you're? Yeah. Well, I mean, like that's just that's just the way I understand rights. Like I was mentioning before, like you seem to have like a a, a disparate understanding of what a right is compared to my view. Yeah. But, like, the main difference that I'm seeing is that, like, and this is what I've noticed before, and I think I mentioned this in my Twitter post, or in my Twitter comment, is that when other people are describing what they would call not a rights violation, in those cases, they're usually talking about what I would consider a justified rights violation, and I think that that, like makes up the main difference on my view compared to like this view which is way more common oh i am actually not sure if this view of rights violation is common <laughs> well uh, it just appears i'm not sure like if people have take it to me take rights violation to mean something like uh, an action which we uh, have a negative attitude towards uh when utility uh, changes zero. I guess I can't say how common it is really, I just would say that in my experience, mm -hmm. at least around vegans especially, I've found that like most uh, of them seem to describe what I would consider to be a justified rights violation as an example of not violating um, the individual's rights. And I think that's like one of the starkest differences. Um, but other than that, like we seem to have very similar mm. views. Like we're we're considering the same types of things, although I'm not sure if yeah, I'm not sure if we're considering the same in the context of um, what I was describing. We're comparing um, the seriousness of the rights violation to the seriousness of the um, rights be violation that would have been prevented. You know, all utility mm. aside. I, that's the that's the one thing that seems to be, I guess, more unique to my view, and I don't think that threshold deontology like accurately captures that, or at least I'm not convinced that it does. Well, if all you like, we could have like different. Uh, okay, let let me say let me put it this way. Let's say, uh, let's say there are two differently weighted rights violations. Let's say you know, bodily autonomy and uh, murdering someone. Do you think those are, do you take those to be differently weighted? Yeah, I do. Yeah, like, let's say Dep injecting someone uh, with, like, saline, uh, you would take that to be, like, a violation of bodily autonomy, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, even though, it, like, even though it might be, like, harmless to inject someone with saline, uh, pretty much like maybe it would cause some burning or something uh but it's it's just like salt right so it's just salt and water so uh but but even then you would have you like you would view that as a rights violation and say killing someone uh killing someone you have you have a strong attitude strong negative attitude towards killing someone and you consider that as a rights violation right yeah so if if we just go by like let's let's set up a situation. A setup uh, would be that um, there is a person, and this person is going to inject a syringe full of saline into another person. Um, so let's just put it like doctor versus victim or something like that, right? So just for the sake of uh, clarity, so doctor has a syringe full of saline, and there is a victim doctor is going to inject victim with uh, saline now you pull out a gun and you shoot the person or someone or let's say someone else pulls out a gun and shoots doctor sure um, that wouldn't be a that, that would be a rights violation on my view even though they are preventing a rights violation which is 
uh, weighted differently. It still would be an ice violation on my view because I have a negative attitude towards uh, shooting someone who is uh, going to inject someone else with poison. So I have a negative attitude, not poison, saline. So I have a negative attitude towards shooting someone uh, who has a, a syringe full of saline which is going to be injected um, into them regardless of the utility. So even if like there's going to be like uh, a utility, like yeah, regardless of the utility in a vacuum, I would have a negative attitude towards it. So it would be a rights violation on my view to uh, shoot someone, shoot the doctor with a syringe or saline to prevent them from uh, injecting the victim with saline. But if you just equalize that, let's say the uh, let's say person is going to inject doctor with a syringe full of saline to prevent doctor from injecting a syringe full of saline into another uh, person, I wouldn't have a negative attitude towards that. So it wouldn't be a rice violation on my view. Yeah, and, and that's where our views differ, because I would consider it a rights violation, I would just consider it justified. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we are discussing, right, so. Right, right. All, like, all I'm saying is that it could be captured uh, by just, like, altering the concept of rights. Yeah, um, I'm just, I'm not sure if, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like my view, but. I still think that it would be more accurate to say that I'm measuring the weights of the rights violations that are occurring and then I'm comparing them to each other in a vacuum. And if they're equal or less, then I would consider less in the case of the right being violated. So for example, like if I injected the doctor with saline and it prevented the doctor from injecting someone with, um, with poison then I would consider that to be justified as much as it would be to inject um, the doctor with saline to prevent um, injecting someone with saline without their consent, right? Uh, okay, so le let me put it this way. Uh, so let's say um, you... <coughs> yeah, let's say there was a predator or like a yeah, like a predator and a prey. Uh, you kill the predator to prevent the prey from being killed. So it's an equal rights violation uh, in both cases, right? So yeah, you are you could even rights violation. You could even say that it's 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 less than equal because there's going to presumably be multiple instances of this occurring rather than just one. Oh sure, but we could just. Uh, stipulate that. that there is just one instance of it going to happen yeah sure sure um, we could just hypothetically yeah, yeah. So just stipulate that it was going to be that way yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead so there is just uh, one instance of that happening and yeah what you're left with is a net zero uh so it, it wouldn't be impermissible but like uh let's say there was like a slight decrease in utility. We just introduce a slight decrease in utility. Uh, then, would you consider that impermissible? Well, no, I, I wouldn't. And I think that that's one of the things that distinguishes my view from threshold deontology and one of the reasons I haven't accepted that as a normative theory that I subscribe to is because even if there are some negative yeah. utility that are generated by so, that yeah it would have to be it would have to be to a certain mm -hmm. it would have to be like a like a, a considerable amount i know that's kind of a vague term but like it would have to be like significantly larger or more intense i guess than than mm -hmm. a slight decrease right like it would have to be something you know, like, I don't know, like, it just to give, like, the, like you were saying earlier, like, if, if shooting the predator caused infinite suffering to the predator, then that would be a utility differential that would convince me that it's no longer a justified rights violation, but just a small decrease in utility, that would, that, that wouldn't, that wouldn't sway my, um, my calculus. Yeah, so, but, that's, yeah, so the thing is, um, 
if if you're saying even if there was like a small generation suffering in this case you wouldn't consider it a an unjustified rights violation you would still consider it a justified rights violation right? yeah and maybe that's because i'm assigning a positive value to preventing rights right and maybe that maybe i'm like i think that possibly that's what's going on here is like the the act of preventing rights i consider to be justified in the case of preventing the rights with rights violations that are not as serious or just as serious as the right that's being violated and then the utility does come in as well which is what has which which is what has kind of drawn me to threshold deontology in the first place because I do consider it to have some threshold where there's enough utility drain where I I would have to sign off on it being unjustified right but um, huh. but yeah so so maybe what's doing the the work that that is kind of that we've been trying to like pin down maybe that's the positive value that I put on the prevention of a right being violated yeah hmm. what do you but, uh, what do you think of that yeah so yeah, yeah I think okay so let's say there are two murders and there is one victim um, and both of these murderers together are going to kill this one victim uh, and the only way to prevent it is by killing two murderers. So in this case, you would be committing two rights violations, preventing only one. Hmm. So would that be impermissible on your view? Um, I don't think so. Um, let me think about that. Hmm. Yeah. Because even if you add in the way deontic good weight of preventing one rights violation, which is equal and opposite to uh, committing a rights violation, it would still like like there could I, there would be some threshold where it would it would just bottom out. Because you're only preventing one right violation, but you're committing two. Right. So hmm, I'll have to think about that some more. Yeah. Thank you for bringing up these interesting um, these interesting uh, scenarios that force me to more, more critically oh, think about my views. I, <laughs> I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, I, I appreciate you for like being willing to chat. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. No, I mean, like you've struck me as a, an intelligent and um, and forthright person intellectually, and. Um, and that's something I, I have a lot of respect for and like I try to surround myself with people like that because I want to be more you know in that I, I want to be more like those kind of people if that makes sense so it, this is my way of yeah, saying I, I, I agree with you I share the same kind of, yeah I share the same attitude so let's see so, so to think about this yeah Nick I just get you caught up on this uh, so yeah like maybe uh, in the meantime so paradigm like would you mind like what, like should i just call you paradigm oh yeah that's fine okay yeah so yeah we were uh, like all we were discussing is that um like, like in the case of like maybe shooting an order of predator or shooting a murderer to prevent murder uh, of another person, like shooting a serial killer to prevent murders, uh, would that be a rights violation or not? And I think, like, my view and Paradigm's view are, like, pretty much same, like, overall, but it's just, like, there's, like, some uh, semantic, conceptual kind of difference. So, I just take it to, uh, it to be not a rights violation to shoot a predator uh, who, uh, in, in order to save a prey. And um, Paradigm thinks that it would be a rights violation, it, but it, j it would just be a justified rights violation. So I'm just trying to like uh, bring out some, uh, uh, like pro maybe trying to convince Paradigm that it wouldn't be a rights violation. So right now all we have reached is to a point where there is going, uh, yeah, oh, so I uh, basically like if we take a rights violation, in the in the utility calculus or in the uh, like 
any philosophic calculus variant, uh, a rights violation would have a negative value, right, uh, in the overall calculus. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if we just call it a negative value, like if we assign a negative value to that action, um, there there could be like uh, problems where you have an equal and opposite uh, situation. So you could, uh, yeah. So I was like, if you call it a rights violation but you call it a justified rice violation so what is it that is doing the justification in that case so we came down to something like uh, paradigm values just the action of saving someone uh, or something like that to be like a basically like a deontic good uh, view right but uh, yeah so i've right now the conversation is at me just putting a situation where there is one victim and maybe two or three aggressors and the only way to prevent these three aggressors from killing this one victim is to shoot all three of them. And if we consider it like a rights violation to shoot three people through, uh, shoot three aggressors, uh, it would just be like uh, saving one person or so deontic good of saving one person. But you also have the negative value of like killing two or three aggressors. So the calculus would just be like on the net side. So it would be impermissible. But I don't think paradigm takes the view that it would be impermissible to shoot two or three aggressors to save one person. That does seem to be a problem. I'm having flashbacks. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Oh no, I was just gonna say. I was just trying to be funny. Like I, I was gonna say that I'm having flashbacks to that scene in uh, Team America: World Police where they go and save that guy, and he's in, he's being held in Cairo and. Team America, like, basically blows up the entire country to save <laughs> um, or, or you could just say John Wick, right? John Wick goes to save that one puppy and just basically <laughs> <laughs> punctures through the entire, like, an army of goons. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think I'd have to think about it some more. Yeah, I, the way I cash out the... Um, the sort of um, rights violation thing is, I, w I would say that, like, um, so killing one person to save another person, provided, you know, uh, if the one person was an aggressor, uh, you can make a reasonable case for, like, defending the one. I, w I wouldn't consider, th I, I don't think I would actually, like, say that it's a rights violation. Well, okay. Um, I would say it probably is a rights violation, but there are countervailing rights. Um, so, like, if you're an aggressor, mm -hmm. I think um, it, like, everybody has, uh, like, a, a basic negative right to not be f with, um, mm -hmm. basically. And if you're an aggressor and you're actively f***ing with somebody, I think your your claim to that right is diminished. Yeah, you're um, overfitting that right, right? Yeah, you something, you're, something you're, like that. Yeah, yeah, your claim to the right is sufficiently diminished. We're justified in using equal force mm -hmm. to what you are imposing to, uh, to stop you. Um, so, like, I would consider it a rights violation, but they're just countervailing rights. Yeah, so the way I would just say it is that, like, um, I wouldn't consider it a rights violation. Um, mm. But, like, so the way I view rights is just actions which we ought not perform uh, um, in a vacuum. And by vacuum, I just mean I'm stripping away all the utility considerations. So... Like if I take the situation, like one aggressor, one victim, three aggressors, um, do I have a negative attitude towards shooting three aggressors to prevent one rice violation? Cons like and uh, not considering the utility. So there is no utility change that is happening. The only thing that is happening is there is a rice violation that is going to happen, and I have to commit, <coughs> um, which will prevent this one rights violation. So do I have a negative attitude towards it? If the answer is a yes, then I would consider it a rights violation. But in my case, I don't have a negative attitude towards it. So I would just say that it is not a rights violation. Yeah, Nick, you're so how are you how are you unpacking rights? Yeah, yeah so I, I could put negative rights as act which ought not be performed to some subject in a vacuum. And by vacuum, I just mean there's no utility configuration. Oh, yeah, okay. 
oh, so it's like a Deontic kind of thing. It's just yeah. like here's, a, yeah. The way I cash out rights is like um, I think of it as like an entitlement that would be ethically wrong, and I. So it's like it's something that I feel somebody's entitled to that I have a, a strong preference or disposition against. Um, that yeah, it's not really it. different from my view. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just like words here and there. Yeah, yeah. But like, um, yeah, so I think my view would just like be more, more like uh, it would be a bit, I don't know if I should use the word specific or broad, I'm not really sure, but all I'm saying is I'm taking into consideration more things than just an action. So I'm just not looking at it from like shooting a person, I'm looking at it as shooting a person who is going to kill another person or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like you you might if you consider like shooting that type of person a rights violation. It does sound like you have some kind of concept of rights um, being forfeited. Um, so like yeah uh, yeah, yeah yeah I yeah, think yeah. that's kind of like yeah it's the same kind of thing. But like I uh, like I'm not really sure if I would like I don't think I would use the word forfeiting of rights or whatever. Like it, it mm. sounds a bit realist to me. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Or, yeah, like, if forfeit just means, like, they're committing an action such that their claim to the right has been, like, well, in your in your view, has been, like, uh, sufficiently diminished, you know? Yeah, it's it's Some kind point. of, like, the same concept, but, like, yeah, I, I am, like, I'm, I'm kind of spooky about the claim to the right yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think, like, what, like, claim to the right um, might... Because I, I do think that all this is going going on inside my head, right? Like, I don't yeah, think yeah, yeah. So, like, claim to the right would just mean, like, I I think that... Uh, or like, you no longer think this person uh, ought be extended this entitlement. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You stole yeah. the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I don't think our views are that different. To be honest. Okay. It's just like a maybe semantic thing here or there. So. I didn't mean to derail the conversation. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Paradigm. Like I, 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 I like I hope that was fine. Like this little detour. Oh yeah, absolutely. And like from what I can gather, it seems. I don't know, it's it, like at first I thought Nick's position was more similar to mine, but now it seems like it's similar enough to yours that Nick, it, 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 I would expect you to consider it not a rights violation in the way that, uh, it, it, sorry, how do I pronounce your name? Is it Apuda? It's Apuda, yeah. Oh, okay. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, <clears throat> it, it seems like, <clears throat> it seems like your view, based on what you were saying, would would consider that a a a non rights violation or not a rights violation um but but earlier you said that wasn't the case and so i'm i'm not really sure um on my view like i i consider a rights violation to be <clears throat> when you are essentially violating a uh or going against a deont deontological rule that is relating to the mm. the treatment of another person so for example you know not violating their right to bodily autonomy or not violating their right to life would be just following the negative rule of not killing them or not violating their bodily autonomy and so um and and so that's why i consider it to still be a rights violation for example like when we're killing someone in self-defense of ourself or another person um, when they're using lethal force against that person, right? And so, I, like, that's why I understand it to be still a rights violation, but it would be justified because we've got other considerations that are coming into the picture, such as the, the right violation that's being prevented. And to, to address the hypothetical that you, that you presented um, earlier, um, you know, I think that... Um, what happens is I'm assigning either a larger value or a smaller value, like a lar either a larger value to the actual positiveness of preventing a rights violation 
or I'm putting such a low value on the negative um, uh, value of um, t of violating a right in the context of preventing a right that it um, oh. that it justifies that even if there's multiple instances of it occurring. So, um, like, by by which I mean, you know, like multiple persons. Uh, so it basically, it's like, yeah. So again, I don't think, uh, yeah. At this point, I think it, the views are basically is just the words that are different. Um, yeah. So it's like you just ha like when we add these other things, you your threshold uh, is basically changing. So what what the way sorry not the threshold the weightings that you are assigning to the rights violation is changing, and at that point, it's just low enough that it, like technically it is a rights violation, but it's just low enough that you wouldn't really care even if it wasn't. Right? Yeah. So like for example, like to bring it back to like the uh, the less extreme example earlier, you know, if I had to inject three doctors with saline to prevent one uh, doctor oh. from injecting someone with saline against their consent, then I would still consider that to be justified. And that's probably because, like I said, I'm, a, I'm either placing a higher value on the actual, um, the, the prevention of the right being violated, or I'm placing, or maybe it's a mixture of both, right? Where I, I'm, I'm putting a, a higher value on that, and then I'm also putting a lower value on violating the rights of someone else in the context of preventing a right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, it, at this point, it's just like probably some war thing. For sure. <laughs> it's, it sounds like uh, it's just like semantic, semantic difference, yeah. Uh, yeah, semantic dissonance between both positions, but I think that once you guys like lean into each other hard enough, I think you're talking about the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's kind of what I was describing earlier when I said that, like, my view seems really similar to the, the one that I find most common amo among vegans, which is that it's not a rights violation to, for example, like, kill someone in prevention of them killing another sentient being um, that w they were aggressing on. And so I think that, like, we follow, like, the same sort of, like, logical pathway. It's just that what what they are calling a not not a rights violation i would still consider it a rights violation because that's how i understand rights to be but it would just be a justified rights violation it's a different concept of rights right actually yeah, i'm not I even know, convinced i think it is actually it's a different concept of rights it's just like the same concept <laughs> maybe we agree it. i don't know i think yeah hey, th actually like for, for at least yours uh, yeah i think uh, paradigms and my like, yeah my concept of rights slightly differ but my concept of rights and maybe uh, nick's concept of rights they don't differ yeah but it's just that i lack that concept of like forfeiting rights or like yeah well i wouldn't say i lack it like i i get it but it's just I'm viewing it slightly differently. Like, yeah, like, and then, like, I wouldn't consider, yeah, like, I think it's kind of weird, too, to say something like possessing a right, you know? Like, that. that's always seemed kind of weird to me. Like, and that's because I understand well, rights yeah, to be I these... Think by, like, by, by possessing a right, all, all I mean is that I have a, I have a concept of a right that I think that applies to them or something like that. Like, it's just... Them possessing a right, like if I was to say, like, like that person, yeah, that person has that right. That's just another way of me saying, like, I think that person has that entitlement. Like that, it's really like it's not spooky. Mm. Yeah, I mean, as long as it is not in realist territory, it's not spooky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you see this this guy in the chat, man. What What's he even talking about? Like, I, I can't... Oh, I have no idea. Uh, I like haven't been paying his, attention. His objection is like, vegans don't... What is it? Hold on. Let me... Oh, by the way, Paradigm. Uh, sorry, I've been recording this. Do you mind if I post it on my channel? Not at all, actually. I was, I was recording too. I was going to ask you the same question. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, okay. So I'm just uh, cutting it right now so that we can just add on this.
Alright, sounds good, thanks. Exports. If not, I think I can mirror your recording if that's fine by you. Dude, I hate editing video so much. I but don't edit, dude. All I'm like, this video is just going straight <laughs> to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> no, the reason that, like, I hated it, I hated editing video for so long because, like, it's there hasn't really been like consumer grade processors that could edit or that could that could um, export video in like a reasonable amount of time